Hey guys, Nick DiPaolo here, and uh, I want to thank you so much for supporting this show. As you know, people like me and you, with viewers like ours, are definitely under attack. And uh, whether it's Michelle Malkin made a speech last week um, saying so and giving examples of friends of hers, colleagues, conservatives being booted off YouTube and Twitter and, and, and you know, banks not giving them loans because of their political bl The point is we're under attack and there's nowhere really in the media can go to get the truth. But this is one of the places where you can. But we can only do it with your support. Uh, if you want to make daily contributions, you go to nickdip.com. If you're watching me on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, the little bell below. And uh, you can also sign up at patriot.com if you want to be a monthly supporter. And if you do that, you get an extra story a day. Nobody else gets. You get to ask me questions, and you get access to our archives. And also, if you're a small business or a big business and you want to be a sponsor, uh, you can do that at nickdip.com. But I can't think of... Uh, a more uh, crucial time because f freedom of speech is under attack in this country, whether you know it or not. And um, big tech is behind a lot of it. They control all the information. So luckily, you have a place to come for now. I'm sure, you know, I'll have to find a platform soon. Uh, but that's what you guys like about this. I cut through the bullshit. And uh, so we appreciate the support and uh, hope you enjoy the show. Tickle that frick. Welcome to the show. Thursday, last day of the week for me, folks. <laughs> I don't fucking work more than 12 hours a week. That's how we keep it. Got nothing to do. Maybe I'll fly to Minneapolis and burn some shit down. Or loot a Target store. Because, you know, you guys owe us that. Ah, oh, sickening, sickening, sickening. How are you, folks? Welcome to the show. Uh... We got, uh, obviously, uh, footage of uh, rioting going on because of the Minneapolis. Uh, just to make things clear, I don't know, you know, I hope that you know, that cop's going away forever, and he should. You know? And and the cop's with him. I don't, uh, don't understand what that fucking, you know. But I'll say it again. If you listen to the cop's orders when you get out of the car and they tell you what to do, you don't end up in that situation. You got to be careful, black or white, because there are crazy cops like that one out there. So just comply with what they say. Don't fucking resist. See, because they've been shot at by black guys and their friends have been shot at by black guys. I know plenty of cops and some of them will fucking snap like that guy did. But he's going to burn in hell, hopefully. No, no reason for that guy to fucking die. But again, when I get pulled over, I know, Nick, you're white. Not really. Look at me. I got some fucking grease ball on me. A little bit of black. That's why I drive fast. That's why I drive fast. That's why I go to KFC twice a week and the Waffle House. <laughs> but I do this, and I do this, and I'm telling you, and I've said it on the show before, especially at night, you get pulled over for speeding or something, turn the dome light on, hands on the fucking wheel. And they sometimes they won't even write you up. They appreciate it so much. Let's not forget they risk their lives. That gives no right, though, for this jerk off to kneel on the guy's neck till he's dead. Anyways, great to be with you. Very, very uh, well. I want all of you to enjoy your cake. So enjoy. <coughs> Richwood <coughs> was a friend of mine. <coughs> it's not a plaque. <coughs> it's not a statue. <coughs> Nothing to commemorate him. <coughs> Ah. Mr. DiPaolo, no one could be as nasty as, as you pretend to be unless they, they really wanted to be disliked. I am like God and God like me. I am as large as God. He is as small as I. He cannot above me nor I 
Benny Hill, baby! Silesia, 17th century. La, la, la. Let's get to it. Protests descend, descend on the streets of Minneapolis for a second night over the death of George Floyd. A suspected looter has been shot dead. Well, some good news. Outside a pawn shop after protests over the death of George Floyd descended into chaos Wednesday night. It's going on in L.A. too, by the way. You know, any reason to get out of the house on a hot night. And rioters vandalized stores across the city. Minneapolis uh, Department Police John Police Chief John Elder confirmed in a midnight press conference that one person was shot and killed, that another person was being held in custody. See, because there's some people guarding their stores. See, they have a right to do that. And there's also, there's a group down there called uh, Well-Armed Rednecks. <laughs> War, I guess, would be the acronym. <laughs> but they're protecting the shit and people who own businesses. Here's some video of Minneapolis a very liberal shithole where Black Lives Matters have their headquarters. Uh, roll the tape, Raz. Look at that. Let's burn down our own shit, huh? Beautiful. Just fucking beautiful. What does that do? I don't understand. But again, I am just furious that people are that dumb. To And again, the media... The media, I said it yesterday in the show, they've been aching for a race war on this. They don't know what kind of dangerous game they're playing by cherry picking stories when white cops do bad shit and ignoring all the black crime that goes on in every city every day. And there's white victims ignoring all of it. Fucking, when I lived in, every, you can, I've read 10 stories when I lived in New York about a, a young black guy raping an 80 year old white woman and shit. Nothing. Nothing. It happens so much, it's not news. And until they start reporting shit like that, the issue of race will never be in context, okay? You keep airing uh, footage of white cops being bad and whatnot, and, and the lie has become the truth. And the truth of the matter is, the cops, 99% of them, are great people, and you can look up statistics. They have interactions with literally millions of people a year. And you know how many of those end in gunplay? Less than one half of 1%. And last year, more white people were shot by cops than black people. So the narrative that it's open season and Gail King crying on you, it's just, a, it's a crock of shit. But the media keeps throwing gas on it, you know? The left-wing media, because that's what they want. It, 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 the way it's reported just makes me sick. And again, I'm not defending the fucking idiot cops and what they fucking did. The guy had like a... What, you try to forge a check or something. How that turns into a physical confrontation is on that guy. But you don't fucking kill him after you have him in cuffs. I don't get it. But they don't worry about it, because those cops are going to fry. They are finished. Uh, stores, including Wendy's, Target, Walmart, and AutoZone were looted, ransacked, and some set alight before rioters tried to bust open an ATM. As many ignored plays from the Floyd fam. Again, I bet you a lot of these people could be from out of town. I don't know. Not necessarily. Like I said, Black Lives Matter. That's where they're centered in Minneapolis. But a lot of people use this as an excuse. This guy dying to steal shit. Simple as that. The same suspects every fucking time. I'm tired of it. There's something wrong with the black man's mind. There's something wrong with his mind. But Nick, there was some white people. Yes, there were three white people. For every white, every white person doing this shit, there's 350 black people. OK, and that's always been the fucking case. And they make sure, by the way, they make sure they get that one fat chick running out of fucking Walmart with diapers and shit just to balance it off. <laughs> uh, video show what was reported to be in an apartment building entirely engulfed by flames as rioters stood and watched the fire department was nowhere to be seen. Why would they show up? Because even when they show up during when it's a non riot situation, they get shit thrown at them. An AutoZone store is also one of the uh, stores that was set on fire. Outside a GM tobacco store, a group of four men with huge firearms were seen and said they had come to protect local businesses from looters. I believe those are the rednecks. <laughs> what did I say it was called? Uh, huh? Well-armed well -armed rednecks. Uh, during the riots, a woman in a wheelchair was punched in the head and sprayed with a fire extinguisher after trying to block protesters allegedly with a knife in her hand. So first I felt bad till I heard about the knife. 
I, but she's out there trying to prevent looting. I understand that. But you're in a wheelchair. You got a knife? What are you fucking? <laughs> Pretty sure I could kick your ass even if you had a gun. Sneak up behind you and I'd suffocate you with your colostomy bag. Who the fuck are you kidding? These blacks. Who knows what they're going to take the wrong way. Let's see some. Uh, we have the lady in the wheelchair. Let's uh... Move, bitch. Move, bitch. Yeah, Somebody just... Oh, hey, 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 hey. All right, you fat. She got a knife. She got a knife. Now she really white. Get out of here. Leave her alone. She got a knife. Leave her alone is right. She's stabbing people. She ain't stabbing nobody. What a country. Oh, there's the knife. <laughs> She's driving her own getaway car. Oh, you, what are you doing? And look at, it's not like she's a young lady in a wheelchair. Here's some more of them roughing her up. This is an ex- Nice country. You fat nasty black bitch. Hmm. Hey, where are the white women at? Well, there's one there trying to protect some product. What is she thinking? What a country, folks. What a country. White lady, not a young girl, fucking like a middle-aged housewife with a knife and a witch. <laughs> now, later on, some of the uh, looters were saying she was standing up and shit like that. Okay, we're going to believe you. You fucking loot for a living and ransack. Why should we take your, even if she was, you know, there are people in wheelchairs that do stand up occasionally. What is she thinking, though? She goes out there, <laughs> bring a couple of your friends in wheelchairs. At least have a, <laughs> what are you doing? What are you fucking doing? <laughs> I'm going to get my weapons. These blacks are going crazy. Later on, a mongoloid showed up with a fucking shoulder rifle. What a, what a country. <clears throat> oh, we got more Raz. We got, uh, oh, this is the uh, target. And as Raz pointed out, Raz's wife is from Minneapolis, right, Raz? Is that what you yeah. said? The family's from Minneapolis and Target, it, which you're absolutely right, because I've been by the giant Target, uh, the headquarters, right? That's not going to fly well with the corporate fellas. Here's, here's a. Here's LaQuisha getting some lamps for Father's Day. Yeah. This looks like a Target in New York every on Tuesday. <laughs> Listen to the sirens. Wow, look at all the security. No cops. We've, we've lost it. Hey, I like that rug. Hey, Willie. Back here. That's a fucking rug that would go good in your van. <laughs> Kid's got a muscle shirt on, sprinting down the fucking aisle. Yeah, what a society, folks. What a, And we are the only, the most civilized country on the planet, believe it or not. I there's, smoke. Go ahead, Razzy. Yeah, there's also one more of the uh, wheelchair lady, too. Oh, let's see what she's doing now, the wheelchair lady. Oh, no, hold on. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, the only thing worse than, like, beating up a lady in a wheelchair was uh, this boxing match that I found. <laughs> it's a little girl against John Cleese. <laughs> Cleese is cleaning her clock. That was money. I was like 15 when I saw that. I almost shit my pants laughing. John Cleese beating the fuck out of like a 10 year old girl. That's as bad as hitting somebody in a wheelchair, in my opinion. <laughs> uh, we already showed the uh, lady in a wheelchair, right? Uh, I think we've covered pretty much everything. And again, it's going on in, did I hear it in Nashville? Uh, no, somewhere else. Uh, but also Los Angeles. Just looking for a you know, reason. And um, I'm sorry. I'm not defending the cop that kneeled on the guy and killed him, but I'm defending the rest of the cops that try to do their job and risk their necks to protect you, me, black people. Remember my, you remember Furman after the OJ case? Every, he said the N-word, he's a fucker. Remember? This is the one thing Oprah did right. 
Oprah had him on because she saw him in an interview saying, I've spent the last 25 years of my life in black neighborhoods at three in the morning trying to protect black people, but I'm a racist or whatever. And Oprah had him on and fucking he cleared his name. And uh, I'm sure there's a lot of black people who st still don't like him. Probably somebody like Ice Cube. Is there anybody more unlikable than Ice Cube other than myself? Just a hate monger. Fucking hates Whitey to the core. That's him being happy. That's him at his wedding. But he hates cops. And you know, who? what, what, what group was it, Raz? Who was he with? Public Enemy? Well, NWA. Oh, I think Public Enemy. That's why I like Raz. He's black and he doesn't know. He grew up in, oh, that's right. He grew up in the South. He can name like 14 Klansmen who have a band. <laughs> but uh, he's written, you know, Public Enemy, Ice Cube. He should be, uh, he should be making a, a fucking movie that'll go straight to fucking, uh, straight to fucking basic cable. Um, but he, he's written songs about killing cops and shit because, you know, it's paranoia. <laughs> What do we want? Dead cops. When do we want? Now. What do we want? Dead cops. When do we want? Now. Dead cops. Now. Yeah. That's Black Lives Matter. Uh, anyways, I, I just, I'm not an Ice Cube fan. He's just a fucking hateful fuck. In the wake of George Floyd's death in Minneapolis, veteran rapper and actor Ice Cube asked how much more crime must police officers commit against black Americans before we uh, before we strike back. That's his question. It's a sick question. You're a sick fuck, and I'm not that sick that I'm going to answer it. How long will we go for blue on black crime before we strike back? Ice Cube, whose real name is O'Shea Jackson, he's Irish, wrote on Twitter Tuesday in a response to rapper Talib Kweli. Or Kweli. I, what is it? Oh, you didn't know who fucking Public Enemy, but you know Talib Kweli? I looked it up. He was on NWA. Who was? Not Public Enemy. Ice Cube. Oh, I showed my whiteness. <laughs> he was an NWA guy? Yeah. That means Negroes with attitude. Like there's any other kind. Fuck. It's like saying Italians with no fucking gold jewelry. Um, Talib Kweli. Leave Kawali. Hey, Kawali. Do it, leave it a beaver. Hey, Kawali. How come Ice Cube's like killing white people and stuff? <laughs> Sharing a video of a Minneapolis police officer with his knee on the. Uh, anyways, uh, yeah. So, Ice Cube, uh, o o O'Shea Jackson, whatever your real name is, do you fucking. Do you ever think that. I don't know, you might have a problem with the cops, the way you guys act around cops. Because we've showed footage over the years, you know, well, we showed it two days ago, NYPD cops, and again, recent footage, by getting milk thrown on them. Uh, Daytona Beach, that big party with all the black people. Come. Cops show up uh, because they're not, you know, whatever. It's bottles that start being thrown at them. They weren't even trying to arrest everybody. He's doing social distancing. Um, but yeah, do you ever look in the mirror? Do you ever look in the mirror, Ice Cube, and go, hey, maybe it's our community, our culture? You know, almost at 80% uh, babies out of wedlock that grow up without a male figure. Do you ever think of fixing that and a lot of this shit would go away? Fucking cop hater. <sighs> Hours after video went viral, Minneapolis Mayor uh, Jacob Fry. And oh, by the way, Ice Cube, how about the statistics? How many cops have been killed by young black men over the last 10 years? Do you ever look at those numbers? And you're going to say those are all justified? Mr. Ice Cube, if your house is robbed tonight, who are you going to call? Don't say Ghostbusters. He's going to say, no, I'm going to call the rest of my band members from fucking NWA. We're going to fucking clean it up ourselves. Call Snoop. I was after the video went viral. Minneapolis Mayor Jacob Fry. Oh, have you seen this liberal jerk? He makes fucking Trudeau up in Canada. Look like fucking Frank Shamrock. Oh, Ken Shamrock. What did I get, Frank? <laughs> Frank. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah. Mayor, Mayor Jacob Fry announced the firings of four Minneapolis Police Department offices. Uh, I would think so. Bye-bye. Police Chief Madaria 
Arredondo told reporters he would cooperate fully as the investigation proceeds and the department will have its own internal investigation. He added that based on additional information he received, he called in federal authorities to conduct the probe because he's concerned about possible civil rights violations. Fry said during the press conference that he understands that people are angry and have the right to protest, but urged caution and continued social distancing because of the coronavirus pandemic. (laughs) Really? People burning down apartment buildings and burning down stores, but make sure you stay six feet from that guy, your friend with a Molotov. And the other guy with the fucking, uh, you know, Glock. Make sure you stay. You don't want to get a cold. <laughs> fucking silly. Oh, silly. Not everybody was, uh, there was some actual, not everybody was being violent. They said there was a protest where they were dancing to fucking, <laughs> and they were eating pizza and dancing to, uh, it was a good, uh, I think it was Bill Withers, who I fucking love. Uh, anyways, Floyd's arrest happened near a cup foods. At the intersex of she- <laughs> near a cup foods. What the fuck's cup foods? Raz, what's cup foods? I don't know. I'll tell you what cup foods is. You put peas in it. You can put peas in a cup. You can put grits. <laughs> Old English. Those are cup foods. Uh, at the intersex of Chicago Ave and 38th Street on Monday, police were called to investigate a report of someone trying to pay with a counterfeit bill at the grocery store and found a man matching the suspect's description on the hood of his car, according to the police and scanner audio blah, 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 blah. And that's when the shit happened. And again, because of a counterfeit bill, and I'd like to see some footage, not that it'll justify him dying, but I do, I mean, they already had him in handcuffs. That's the big thing. You got him on handcuffs, you know what I mean? I don't, um... I want to see how much of a squabble or a squirmish happened, but some people say not that much. Anyways, don't worry. The cops, those cops will be taken care of. Hey, you guys, a few days ago, you heard me introduce Supersized Blues on the show. It's a, it's a book. Uh, uh, besides the violence and revenge in the book, there's a lot of sex and some pretty wild stuff for sure. I'm learning uh, about some stuff even I've never heard of before. According to the author, some of it was drawn from an actual in-office in office experience. People getting laid in the office and shit. That never happened to me. I was fucking... Oh, he's making coffee for some broad. Should just take it and walk away. Uh, but here's the book. And I, I've started to read it. It is. There's a lot of revenge, a lot of violence, a lot of sex. Derek Jeter's on the cover, apparently. I don't know what the fuck he's doing. <laughs> A-Rod's in the back trying to pick up a white chick. Supersized Blues by Roger St. John. It really is a good read. So if uh, anyway, if you don't like to read about sex or watch sex or participate in sex, you're a big girl. Uh, then number one, you probably, uh, you're doing it wrong. Tommy's working some humor in here. And uh, don't get this book if you don't like sex or reading about sex or watching it through a window, which I've done on a ladder. Freshman year, Andrew Scoggin, all-female dorm. Just like Belushi, that we got it from the idea from Animal House. Me and my buddy Kevin Cavanaugh. He was in a tree. I was on a ladder. And what's funny is, this it's like 11 degrees out on a Friday night we're drunk. His, his branch snapped that he was on. He fell about 12 feet. Fucking laugh my balls off. Anyways, for the rest of us, though, I'm recommending Supersized Blues. It's available on Amazon. Go out and get it. It's a, you know, it's a nice fucking read. Summertime. Put on your mask. Stay 40 feet from anybody. And uh, I suggest wearing a loose bathing suit for you fellas if you're going to read this at the beach. You don't want to pitch a fucking sail when you go into the water. Nice gust takes you. <laughs> Speaking of sex and revenge and all kinds of shit. Raz, how long is it, how far into the show are we? 23. Oh, for the love of God. Got another half hour? Somebody mailing me a story, quick. I'm trying to keep the caffeine buzz up so I can get home. I'm done, folks. I started working out when I was fucking, uh, what, sixth or seventh grade, 13? I'm 58. That's 45 years. I hate it. I fucking hate it. Not twice, three times this week. I went home, put on my workout shit. Actually had a cup of coffee, which I always, you know, to fucking never got up. I watched Neil Cavuto. <laughs> fucking the most boring guy in Fox News. Ugh. And then my wife goes, cook something. Go ahead, Raz. 
You want a Patreon question now? Oh, fuck them. Of course <laughs> I do. They're the lifeblood of the... Uh, Mayra F. Why did they not give out their full name? What, am I going to follow you home and try to fuck your daughter? Mayra F., Palm Coast, Florida. What are your top three favorite comedy movies of all time? Well, I know number one is Schindler's List. <laughs> Followed by Terms of Endearment. <laughs> and then Brian's Song. Those three make me belly laugh. That's a good question, because uh, there are very few good comedies. Uh, Mayra F. from Palm Coast. Uh, top three favorite comedy movies. Um, hmm. Caddyshack is in there. Definitely Midnight Run. Raz, if you don't watch that, De Niro and Charles Grodin. It is so goddamn funny. Don't write it down. You're not going to watch it. You get kids. Nah, you're busy. I can't even get him to send me a couple of stories, but he's going to watch a movie. Uh, so Caddyshack's in there. Um, what did I just say? A Midnight Run. And, uh, oh, my God, I'm forgetting. Um, what the fuck made me laugh really hard? Uh, obviously, Animal House might be in there. It's hard to nail it down. I feel like I'm forgetting a, a real doozy. Um, but those are very good movies. What am I forgetting? Here's where I wish people could call in and remind me. Blues Brothers, Blues Brothers very funny. I was, it wouldn't be my top three, but excellent. Um, Practical Magic with Sandra Bullock. That was a fucking hoot a minute. Oh, how about friggin', what am I saying? How about like, um, you know what? Um, again, these weren't like, these aren't A-list movies, but ever watch like um, Bill Murray when he went into Stripes, when he went into the military, or even, even um, which, which everybody panned, all the critics, but uh, Kingpin, Woody Harrelson, he's gonna fake hand bowling. Oh my fucking word. And I know, I know a lot of people love the Big Lebowski. I found that it was all right. Everybody goes nuts over that, but uh, there's a lot of them. Thank you for the question, Amira F. from the Palm Coast. And I, I, I hope you're wearing your mask and not spitting on anybody. I'll tell you who's pissed off like I am. President Trump will sign, I, 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 it might have happened today, an executive order on social media censorship. This is why he's the greatest president to sit in that fucking Oval Office. I don't care if his term ends tomorrow. Okay? The bias. And again, the bias, I meant to say. Uh, let me remind you, YouTube guys that subscribe to my channel, make sure you still subscribe. This is what we're dealing with. Because I've gotten a few notes from people going, hey, all of a sudden I was unsubscribed. This is what we're dealing with. I have 118,000 YouTube followers. It probably should be at 180. Same thing fucking on Twitter. I'm not on, you know, the manager doesn't trust me on Twitter. I put out some pretty crazy shit and I had two strikes on me. Uh, anyways, they've had me at 105,000 followers for about a year and a half now. So Jack Dorsey, why don't you lick my ass crack, even though that would be me doing you a favor. Fucking evil fuck. Anyways, Trump's had enough because uh, they started questioning him. He tweeted something out about, you know, mail-in ballots and how much fraud could happen because of that. And fucking Twitter decided to put up a link to the real information that he's misleading you somehow. This is where we are. Trump will sign uh, an executive order on social media censorship amid rapidly intensifying political bias from the Silicon Valley masters of the universe. And that's what they fucking think they are. Good for you, Trump. I am your voice. Uh, this comes after Trump warned social media companies that continued political bias would lead to action from the administration. So he's pulling rank on these motherfuckers. Who's your fucking boss, huh? Who's your fucking boss? Uh, Republicans feel that social, they don't feel it's a fact that social media platforms totally silence conservative voices, said the president on Twitter earlier today. We have all kinds of evidence. We have it. We have it here. Um, all kind. remember fucking, uh, you know who? James O'Keefe, Project Veritas, went undercover 
after a guy from Google got fired for speaking out. And we have all we have. There's a ton of evidence. The left wants to control the language and the words because your thoughts originate from what? From words. And that's how they control your behavior. Uh, we will strongly regulate or close them down before we can ever allow this to happen. We saw that they attempted, we saw what they attempted to do and failed in 2016. We can't let a more sophisticated version of that happen again. Just like we can't let large scale mail-in ballots take root in our country. It will be a uh, free for all on cheating, forgery, and uh, the theft of ballots. And uh, whoever cheated the most would win. And it's exactly what's going on. Ask Gavin Newsom. Likewise, social media, clean up your act now, he says, or I'll come over there and fucking give you a nice Taco Bell fart in the face. <laughs> Who's your fucking boss, huh? Who's your fucking boss? Uh, a White House spokesman, or a report in Wall Street Journal last week claimed the White House was preparing executive action on big tech bias in the form of an official panel that will review cases of anti-conservative bias from Silicon Valley Company. Now, who's going to sit on the panel? You know, that'll be another big fight. I'll tell you, it should, it should be Rudy, Rudy Giuliani, Pat Buchanan, Strom Thurmond, even though he's dead. Who else is I can think of that's far right? Uh, a White House spokesman appeared to confirm the initiative at the time, telling the journal left wing bias in the tech world is a concern that definitely needs to be addressed from our vantage point and at least exposed so that Americans have clear eyes about what we're dealing with. Tech companies continue to deny that they deliberately engage in uh, political bias. A liar, liar, whore, liar, whore, and you know it. But the evidence against their statements continues to mount. Like I just said, there's a ton of evidence from Michelle Malkin getting taken down to Laura Loomer. There's a ton of shit. Dennis Prager, he's a religious guy. Hit him, him and uh, Adam, Adam Carolla, you know, they made a movie about it and stuff. I, Dennis Prager is like a religious guy and they labeled his shit on YouTube as hate. He's like the nicest, fairest guy who leans right in his politics. Uh, almost every major tech company has been caught in a political bias scandal since the 2016 election, and such cases continue to accumulate. These include, listen to this, Facebook, um, Facebook mainstream conservatives like Candace Owen and uh, Bridget Gabriel, on, they put them on a list, hate agents review list. Candace Owens, a very uh, conservative uh, young black woman, very smart, on a, on a review list, a hate agent review list. Twitter's taking days, these are some more examples, to remove violent threats against Trump supporting high school students and refusing to take action against hate speech from New the New York Times editorial board member Sarah Jong. Remember we put her up? She had all kinds of homophobic and shit about going after white men and they have to be, you know, destroyed and leaked footage of Google executives declaring their intention to make Trump's populist movement a blip in history. They have a guy saying that at Google. OK, so and they're denying it. You listening? Your mother sucks fucking big fucking elephant dicks. You got that? This would be very interesting. I'm going to, you know, they're going to label him a fucking fascist because, oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, you don't like it when somebody shuts down your point of view? Huh? Give him a taste of their own. But who's going to sit on the panel and who's going to. And it better be all fucking right wingers. Just the same way the New York Times. Oh, who's the guy yesterday? Yoel Roth. He was the fact checker, right? <laughs> for for uh, Twitter calling all us Trump uh, supporters Nazis and shit. That's who they use. And this all started when Trump, a uh, couple of things. He was talking about Joe Scarborough and people saying how he might have murdered that girl, which again, again, you know, but he was voicing his, but then when he started talking about how mail-in ballots and the Democrats are trying to steal the election by insisting on mail-in ballots, he put that up. That's when Twitter for the first time slapped the, uh, you know, this could be misinformation. Go to this link. Uh, and, uh, you know, all the Dems, they're all for mail-in because, once again, it's been proven, very susceptible to fraud. If you don't believe me, listen to Jerry Nadler, who today is, you know, 
all four mail-in ballots, right? Uh, he slammed uh, paper ballots as extremely susceptible to fraud in 2004. A recently unearthed video clip shows House Judiciary Committee Jerry Nadler, who last week took President Trump to task for slamming Michigan's mail-in ballot push, railing against the use of paper ballots during a congressional hearing back in 2004. The C-SPAN clip comes from House Judiciary Committee hearing on potential voting irregularities in Ohio during the 2004 presidential election. During the hearing, members of the public were permitted to ask questions of the lawmakers and panelists. Uh, So let's take a look at Jerry Nadler, who now is all for the paper mail-in shit. But this is what he said back in 2004. It's strange to observe that in my experience in New York, uh, paper ballots are extremely susceptible to fraud. Oh! And at least with the old clunky voting machines that we have in New York, um, the the, the deliberate fraud is way down. Uh, compared to paper, when they when the machines break down, they vote on paper. We've had you real are problems. Correct, sir. So that's a that is you there's got to be a way. There's got to be a way. You I'm simply a, a, observing that as a problem. There's got to be a way hypocrite. of getting the best get of our methodology. Get fact, this to your MIT head, you Jew motherfucker. that you? hand-counted paper ballots are among the most reliable. Oh, is that right? Reliable, if, it, if there's a miscount, right. you can argue. discover it. Uh, you can't discover miscounts with these well, uh, machines. Well, maybe optical scan with paper. I, I want a paper trail. I want paper somewhere. But pure paper with no machines... Uh, I can show you. Pre- I can show you experience, which uh, would make your head spin. And we thank you for. Okay. You fucking hypocrite! <laughs> look at him sit back and all, all fucking. Look at the two black broads unhappy behind him, <laughs> stuck in a room full of white guys in suits. I can't take this shit no more. <laughs> look at Jerry all proud and shit. Fucking hypocrites. I guess he tweeted to the guy who put, found this clip and said, I don't know, it sounded kind of almost like uh, he wasn't being angry about it. He said, uh, whatever, I appreciate you putting that up there. I don't know, I heard part of it on the news when I was walking out the door. Anyways, Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. So you're going to be in deep shit uh, once your friends see that. Anyways, uh, oh, here it is, Rez. Uh, on Wednesday morning, Nadler responded to the video after Eric, oh, <laughs> Eric Trump put it out. <laughs> Eric, so good to hear from you. I had forgotten all about you, but hope you are doing okay. That's a little zing, right, Raz? Uh, Love the video of me talking about the need for a paper trail to ensure voting integrity. Mail-in or absentee ballots are paper trail, are paper trail used by, among others, our men and women in uniform. Well, we trust the people in the military to do the right thing. It's the rest of you fuck stains. You know, they call it ballot harvesting. You get a whole bunch of them. A third party collects a whole bunch of them. They knock on doors and they go into people who haven't even voted or registered and explain to them how it works and then tell them how to vote. It's fraught with fucking uh, irregularities. Speaking of irregular, boy, did I clean myself out this morning. Thank you. What's that got to do with anything? I don't know. Metamucil, folks. Hate to sound like an old white guy. It's made of like tree bark and rocks and rope. I swear to God, I passed some crayons I ate in third grade this morning. <laughs> Are you almost done? I got to work out. I got to have another cup of I got to go right home, throw on my shorts, and then lay on my pillow. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell. How big is his fucking advertising budget? From crackhead to CEO. <laughs> A crackhead who invented a pillow. They sleep three minutes a year. And when they finally crash, they could put their head on a fucking fire hydrant and fall asleep. Anyways, I keep doing that bit. Raz is like, what are you doing? Savannah Bananas, motherfuckers. They're right down the street. Daffin Park. Right down the street from my house. Walking distance. 10 minute walk. Two, I can watch baseball. They're starting up in July or August, I think. But it's college kids. Real good players who are about to get drafted or whatever from all over the East Coast and shit. It's like great baseball. You go there. The guy that owns the Savannah Bananas is dressed up in a yellow suit. He looks younger than me. He's got a top hat on. He entertains the crowd the whole game. I found that he was the owner 
I almost shit my pants. We went there. It, it, there was a rain delay for like an hour. I never had more fun in my life. And they're throwing shit, catching prizes. <laughs> Fucking unbelievable. It was as fun as I heard it was. They're already all sold out. But it's like real good fucking baseball. I just fucking love this town, man. Yesterday morning, I got up. I had a flat in my driveway, okay? In New York City, if I lived in New York, it would have been a 40-minute fucking calling around who's not going to rate me price-wise. And What did I do? I called Savannah Tire. Then I go, oh, I wonder how far they are. Well, I click 0.9 miles from my house. I could have walked there with a tire on my back. Drove down there. Uh... Walked in, nobody in line in front of me. This has never happened in New York ever. I found the fucking, there was like a piece of metal stuck in. I thought Rich Wood might have done it, but. Anyway, <laughs> brought it down there. They said it will take a couple hours. Sure enough, I went fucking home, came back, bing, bang, bing. Very nice to me. People of all colors working there, the way it should be. And uh, $40. Patched up my tire. I got up this morning. Okay, it was flat again. But that's not the point. The point. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It's just life is so simple. That would have been an all-day thing where I lived at Westchester. Uh, a lot of people close to Donald Trump are worried that he's not burying fucking Joe Biden. Uh, these are people close to him, people who raise money. They say, why are you not burying him? Trump allies fret over rising Biden threat. Really? I mean, you, you had that nervous? <laughs> uh, when Biden did emerge from his fucking mouse hole on Monday to lay a wreath on a Memorial Day, he did not offer prepared remarks. The main takeaway from his appearance was photographs of him wearing a black face. He was wearing blackface. It's a black mask, but that's blackface. That's what the Dems would do. Uh, he was wearing a black face mask in public as the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention recommends when social distancing is not possible. A move Trump has refused to do publicly. Oh, what, what, where did I get this from? In White House meetings and events or in visits outside of Washington. Yes, and he's got nobody sick and he hasn't gotten sick. So what's your fucking point? But Joe shows his face for three seconds and, uh, you know. What are we doing? What's going on right now? Nothing. We're putting a mask on you, Joe. We're going to go trick or treating. Oh, good. I like Zagnut bars, you fucking old crispy jerk. Remember, black people, you're not black unless Joe Biden tells you. Uh, Donald Trump has thrown, this is a spokesman for Biden, the head of his campaign. Trump has thrown everything but the kitchen sink at Joe Biden since the day he entered the race, using recycled nicknames, outright lies. That's total horseshit. Even disinformation to try and brand him as something he's not. No, that's what you're doing to Trump, you lying cocksucker. Okay. It failed miserably. Vice President Biden saw a record turnout during sweeping victories this spring. Yeah, what was that, three months ago? And united the Democratic Party around a nominee faster than in 2016 or 2008. Why, it says? I'll tell you why, because there was nobody else out there. It's the weakest field in the history of your party. The fact that you got this guy who wears an adult diaper under his suit. He's the nominee who just declared he's going to, he's only person fit to beat Joe Biden, to beat himself. That's what you're bragging about. And I'll say it again. He's not going to be the fucking nominee. I guarantee it. Oprah's going to charge in at the last minute. Oprah and Michelle Obama. And all the fucking white lips are going, oh, my God, my dream ticket. Couple of black bitches. Uh, why? Because voters know Joe Biden. They know his character. Yeah, we know his character. He finger popped his intern about 30 years ago. Likes to sniff girl's hair. Kisses his niece on the mouth. We know his character. Got caught for plagiarizing twice. <laughs> we know his character. Lied about marching with fucking Martin Luther King. What else? We know his character. Oh, that's right. Ukraine put his son on a board of an energy company. And fucking made a million dollars from China. Says nice thing. We know his character. Exactly. He's at the bottom of the swamp. Uh, because... People know Joe Biden. They know his character. And it's going to take more than cheap marketing tricks perfected at Trump University to bring down a true public servant who has fought for the middle class families for over 45 years. Yeah. Will you shut up? Will you? Will you please shut up? Will you shut up? Shut up? Shut up? 
TheDonaldStuff.com is a major sponsor of the show. And as you know, and uh, they just lowered the prices on most of their shirts in the Nick DiPaolo collection to under 20 bucks. I like the sound of that, the Nick DiPaolo collection. We should have gave it some hip fucking guinea name or some. <laughs> the Molto Bani collection. Here's a few T-shirts, including one the, that I helped come up with. That's right, flattening the ass. That's Nancy Pelosi. There I am with the dumbest look on my face I've ever had. Do we can't do comedy no more? <laughs> Wash your filthy asses. Uh, I like that one, MAGA, sort of a mash thing. Uh, so yeah, not only are these shirts under 20 bucks today, if you use the promo code Nick, you get another 10% off. We're practically giving it away to you folks. And uh, anyways, a lot of great stuff on thedonaldstuff.com. Go there and check out all their gear. Don't forget to use the promo code Nick. And we thank them for sponsoring the show. They've been very loyal to us. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Let's uh, lighten it up a bit. I'm tired of uh, fucking tension and race and uh, COVID. It's 2020. Is it not the worst year in the history of the planet? My God. Let's lighten up with some sports news. I can't wait for baseball to get back. This was a, a clip, a softball clip I found on uh, ESPN. I, I'm like, I'm like, is this CGI? Is this a deep fake video? And it's not. This, this, <laughs> I've never seen anything like this. Check out this softball player going deep in the weirdest fashion that you can go deep. Et Renault qui s'installe de dos au marbre. Oh. Voici mettre la balle en jeu. That's French. Envoyez l'autre bord. Watch it. Are you shitting me? <laughs> oh, that dirty card fucker. <laughs> Man, fuck you and your bone spurs. Oh, my God. Are you shitting me? I couldn't hit it like that now, standing the right way. It's one thing if he made contact and hit a ground ball. That would be impressive. But this guy goes yard. Huh? Fuck. You should be at Minneapolis protecting stores that are burning down with that bat. <laughs> I want to see that again. And they're speaking French and shit. Le forte. Watch this. <laughs> the guy didn't really lob it in there either. <laughs> Look at even the umpire saluting. Bon sang, Juan. C'est ta bon sang. Bella chamololo. That ball is gone. I want to get some reaction from like the uh, MLB players. Another interesting, another, uh, another feat. How about this woman in Easton, Massachusetts? Shelly Gunn describes her Polish grandmother... Oh, you gave it away, Russ. Uh, <laughs> no, that's fine. Look, first of all, look at the hands on her. What was she, a heavyweight champion in the 40s? Look at the mitts on her. <laughs> Those are Jack Dempsey's hands. <clears throat> How about that she's still a Red Sox fan and shit? God bless you, honey. Unbelievable. And I'm not kidding you. I had a Halloween mask that looked just like that when I was in high school. God bless her. Look at, Raz, does she have big hands? She must have a huge dick. God bless this woman. Polish grandma, the Jenny Stenja, having a feisty spirit. Stenja certainly displayed that spirit as the 103-year-old woman recently survived a bout with the coronavirus. It did take a little bit out of her. Let's listen. You say you're a little tired this morning. Is that right? I am tired. She is very tired. That's, oh, that's Joe Biden. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, three weeks ago, Gunn, that's her niece or whatever, fucking granddaughter, said Stenja was the first to test positive of coronavirus in her nursing home. She had a low-grade fever and was moved to a separate ward. Good thing she wasn't in New York. She would have been dead in five minutes. Uh, Stenja didn't really grasp or understand COVID-19, Gunn said, but uh, she did know she was very ill. Gunn said there was always a staff member by her side. As Stenja's condition worsened, Gunn said they called to say what they thought were their final goodbyes. She thanked Stenja for everything she had done for her. When Shelley's husband, Adam Gunn, asked whether Stenja was ready to go to heaven, she replied, hell yes. 
Ah. <laughs> uh. The feisty old Polish grandmother of ours officially beat the coronavirus, Adam Gunn said. The staff gave Stenja an ice-cold Bud Light. There she is. This Bud's for you. Uh, To celebrate something she loved but hadn't had in a long time. Stenja was the first resident in the nursing home to recover. They still have 33 cases of the virus in the nursing home. Stenja has lived all her life in Massachusetts. Her husband, Teddy, died in 1992 at age 82. They always outlive us. Uh, married in 1938, they were together for 54 years. She's an avid bingo player, enjoys shooting heroin and playing pool. What? No. Enjoyed reading and loved to crochet until she got arthritis. That explains the giant hands. Gunn said she has quite a few blankets. Stenja made the blankets, even with the arthritis. She's also a hardcore Boston fan. She claims she blew Tom Brady before the Miami game in 19. 19- she used to sit outside and listen to the Red Sox on the radio, Gunn said. Stenja has two children. Listen to this, Rez. Three grandchildren, four great grandchildren, and three great great grandchildren. She's done more in her life than I've done. In- God bless you, honey. She beat it at 103. But put on your face mask at the beach, hot 22 year olds. Come up with a conclusion. If you're under fucking, uh, if you're under 60 and, and you die from this, you just conceived of a weak sperm. Nick, that's horrible. I don't give a fucking rat's ass. It's Thursday. I'm going to go home and do the Jane Fonda workout. Put on some leggings. Do some deep knee bends. Put on that belt that makes you go like this. I love Texas. You know why? They always, they're always saying, you know what? Fuck the government. We're doing what we want. Elgin, Texas bar owner bans customers, get this, not for not wearing face, for wearing face masks. You can't come in if you have a face mask. <laughs> I love it. But there is some uh, logic to what he's saying here. The statement posted outside the tavern reads, uh, here's the picture of it, I think, the statement. Due to our concern for our citizens, if they feel the need to wear a mask, then they should probably stay home until it's safe. So he's putting a little spin on all the worry warts. He says, I think that's a risk. I think that's foolish, said Elgin local Ross Owens, uh, who disagrees with the bar, the guy who owns it. They're taking chances they don't need to take, especially if they're in public service. Shut up! Shut, 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 shut up! Shut up! Uh, It's more of a pushback. The snitches and the contact traces out there, said Kevin Smith, co-owner of the Liberty Tree Tavern. This is still a rural County, he says. Kevin Smith says he's still following social distancing guidelines as set in place by the Center for Disease Control, which should be enough. Along Main Street, you'll find other businesses requiring masks, while others are asking you wear them at your own discretion, which seems fair. I don't know anyone personally, and I know a lot of people that's gotten the virus or has died, said a Cheryl Ashire, owner of the ETX. Uh, Trab in Elgin, whatever that is. Oh, travel. Uh, Cheryl Shia is not a mask wearer, but does not have them, uh, but does have them on hand for her customers. People are just comfortable. We are a small town. We don't have a lot of crowds. We are okay, said Shire. Any bar that reopens are supposed to keep in-person service at 25% occupancy, but there are no outdoor occupancy limits at any bars that do have a, uh, a patio area. Wow, huh? Real novel thinking, playing it by ear instead of one size fits all. And that's how America's supposed to work. I see people giving me the stink eye because I don't have a mask on. Of course, I come in, I have snots dripping down and you know, a little vomit on my T-shirt. Hey, I got to thank people. Again, you guys are keeping this show and it's growing. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. For the first time in a long time, the show is growing. And again, remember, remember, subscribe on YouTube and make sure you stay subscribed. But you go to nickdip.com and you make daily contributions, which also keeps this up. Or patreon.com, you can become a monthly member if you do that. And if you have a business, you can sponsor the show. 
Uh, but I want to thank people since uh, yesterday who have contributed one-time con- contributions. Ron Wilkinson, Florida. Kathleen Yerens, New Jersey. Jason Jones, Connecticut. Josh Naughton, California. Joe Biden's index finger, Texas. <laughs> Daniel Meadows, Texas. Get this one. Stupid asshole, Washington. Get it? Stupid asshole. Stupid asshole. <laughs> Raz is like, I get it. Go on. Matt Patrick, Kansas. Jeffrey Fulgione, Massachusetts. Les- Leslie Funk, New York. James Aaron, Kentucky. Gary Kazarian, California. Lucas Knox, Minnesota. And uh, Frank Haddad signed up on Patreon. And we thank all of you guys very, very much uh, for doing that. We got to, you know, I mean, uh, we report on all the bias and shit. I don't know when they're going to knock on my door and go, enough's enough. Your numbers are getting up there. I grew up with a boy named Rich Wood. (laughs) He invented... He invented... Origami. There's not a plaque. I couldn't come up with anything. That is it for the week, ladies and gentlemen. I can't thank you enough uh, for all the support. Uh, Again, uh, contributions at nickdip.com, sign up at patreon.com, cameo.com. I get two more waiting for me. If you want me to send a personal video roasting one of your friends or buddies or saying happy uh, wedding anniversary or whatever, it's fun. You guys tell me a little bit about the people. And I'll come up with something. Talk for a minute into the phone. All right. That is it. You think it. I will say it. You're welcome. So we'll see you here on Monday. Bye-bye.